everybody. Welcome to Taking Care of You with Mrs. Magoo. I'm Mrs. Magoo. We have a fabulous show for you today. First up on Vision Assist, we are going to be talking about talking books. And the nice thing about this program is it's free. Free. I just love that word. <laughs> and after that, we're going to be talking about some interesting, fun, and unbelievable human body facts. Next up, the benefits of cooking with cast iron. And then finally, a one ingredient facial treatment. And I'll bet 99.9% .9 of you have this ingredient in your home. So let's move right on over to Vision Assist. So today I wanted to talk about a service that's offered by the Perkins Institute for the Blind, and it is their talking book program. This is a free service that is provided to people who live in the New England area. Now, if you have been having trouble reading books for whatever reason, maybe um, you have a visual impairment or blindness or maybe a physical disability, you're bedridden or you can't sit up or maybe you just can't hold a book anymore. But whatever the reason, talking books are the solution for you. Talking books are treated pretty much like a regular library book. It's loaned out to you, you read it, and then you give it back. But at Perkins Library, they don't charge you a late fee if you don't get the book back on time, which is really kind of nice. <laughs> also, they send out all their books via the U.S. Post Office, so you get the books in the mail, and that's all free charge. You don't have to pay any postage. The books come in a container like this. You simply open up the container. Very easy. The book is on this cartridge, and you simply put it into this playback reader and it will read the book for you. Then once you're done with the book, you simply return it to its case, close it up. Then on the front, there's a card here. Then right now, your mailing address is on this card. That's how you got the book. So what you're gonna do is take this card, flip it over, and now Perkins return address is on, the, um, is on the card. So all you have to do is take this, put it in your mailbox, give it to your postal carrier, and it's on its way back to uh, Perkins Library. So once you sign up for the program, you will receive a catalog. It's called Talking Book Topics. Now this comes out probably around four times a year. And this is all the recent books that have been added to the library. Um, by the way, the library carries over 75,000 titles, so I'm sure you'll be able to find a book that you like. Um, they also have magazines as well, all the popular magazines, um, which you can receive monthly as well. So in the um, Talking Book Topics, you can see here it's done in nice, large print that's easy to read. And what they do is they have they uh, divide it into categories. Let's say science fiction, um, humor, romance, the classics, literature, mystery. They put self help. They've got everything. They'll show you the title and there's a DB number associated with each book. That's digital book. That's what one of those little cartridges is. It's called a digital book. So you have the title, you have the digital book number, and then there's a little summary of what the book is about. So once you decide what books you want, you simply call the library and you either give them the title of the book or you can give them the DB number. You can also go online to get a list of all the books that the Perkins Library has. And also, if you can't read or you don't have, if you have trouble reading even large print or you don't um, have a computer, uh, they will also send this catalog out on one of these um, cartridges. So you use it just like the regular books, you plug it into your machine, put it in your machine, and it will read the catalog to you. Also, when you call the library, you can ask the librarian for some suggestions. When you sign up, a lot of times they'll mark on your account the type of books that you like. So when you sign up, you can say, I like mysteries, I like romance, um, I like science fiction. So you could just call the librarian and ask her to send you some books, something that she might recommend. You can also order more than one book at a time. I don't think there's a limit, well, within reason, 
Um, I mean, I've ordered six or seven at a time. I know people that are really avid readers. They spend a lot of times each day reading. You know, they'll get 12 at a time to make sure that they don't run out. Um, also, if you're um, looking for a bestseller or a novel that just has been recently published, um, if it's really popular, you might have to go on a wait list because all the copies have been loaned out. So at least that way, if you end up on a waiting list, you've got the other books as backups. So this is your playback reader. You simply take your cartridge, insert it in, press play, and it will read the book to you. Now, this was designed for people who have low vision. The buttons are really big. Um, there's play button, fast forward. You know, it almost reminds me of like the old recorders. It's got rewind, fast forward, play, uh, pause. Um, they're very, very easy to use. If I can figure it out, anybody can. There's also kind of a nice feature. It's called a snooze button, and it's in the shape of a half crescent moon. And that's for, like, if you want to read while you, when you go to bed, you want to read for a little bit, um, it will shut the machine off after a certain amount of time. So let's say you start reading, uh, you're on chapter one, and you fall asleep, and you wake up five hours later and you're on chapter 54, and you're saying, oh my gosh, where did I leave off? Well, if you used your snooze button, it would have shut the book off after a half hour, 15 minutes, 45 minutes, whichever um, increment of time that you choose. So that is a really nice feature. There is also, uh, on the side, there's a, um, uh, a place to plug a headset in. So if you don't want people to have to listen to you listening to your book. One really nice feature about this machine is that it's portable. Um, you have a plug that you can plug it in, it's right all stored in the back um, here. And once the uh, machine is fully charged, it should last for about 20 hours. And when your battery starts to run low, the machine will tell you that. It will say something like low battery. So that's really nice. You can take it to the beach. You could take it in your car. Um, you can take it to bed at night with you. It's really nice that these are portable and they're relatively small and they're not that heavy. So if you have any other questions about the Talking Book program, you can call Perkins Library at 617-972-7240. Again, 617-972-7240. And you can also call that same number to sign up for the program. You can also reach them online at perkins.org. So here again, if you have trouble reading a book for any reason, give the Talking Book Program a, a try. It's free. What do you have to lose? I know you'll be glad that you did. All right, coming up next, some human body facts. The human body is a pretty remarkable thing. I was reading some interesting facts about the human body, and I thought I'd share them with you. Do you know that your body produces 25 million new cells every second. That's every one second. Um, the only muscle in your body that never gets tired is your heart. The entire surface of your skin is replaced once a month. In an average lifespan, a person will spend one year sitting on the toilet. <laughs> the acid in your stomach is strong enough to dissolve razor blades. Every human has a unique smell, except for identical twins. So it's almost like you have a unique fingerprint while well, you also have a unique smell as well. And I hope it's good. Your nose can remember 50,000 smells. I didn't even think there was 50,000. Your teeth are the only part of your body that cannot repair itself. Your body produces enough heat in 30 minutes to bring a half a gallon of water to a boil. Unless you're having hot flashes, then it's probably three gallons of water to a boil. The strongest muscle in your body is, I was really shocked at this, your tongue. That's probably because we use it so much, some more than others. Your blood circulates through your body three times every minute. Your blood travels 12 
thousand miles every day inside your body. Now that's one heck of a road trip. A person uses 17 muscles when they smile and 43 muscles when they frown. So frowning is a lot of work. The average human takes 20,000 breaths a day. So all this stuff is going on inside our body and we don't even know it, we're not aware of it. So the human body is a pretty incredible thing. Okay, let's head right on over to cooking with cast iron. So why should we cook with cast iron? Well, number one, cast iron is a one piece of kitchen equipment that actually improves with use. Cast iron is pretty much indestructible. So if you buy a pan, you're probably gonna have it for life. Um, a lot of people, they're using cast iron pans that they inherited from their grandparents. Um, a lot of the new kitchen equipment has chemical coatings on it, like let's say Teflon. And you know, when Teflon gets overheated, it releases carcinogens. Also, with those chemical nonstick coatings, you have to be very careful that you don't scratch them or chip them, because if you do, you're exposing your food to those chemicals. But cast iron pans are naturally nonstick, no chemicals needed. You just have to season it before you use it, which we'll talk about later. Now, with cast iron, you can use metal or stainless steel utensils, or you could also use wooden utensils. Um, which with the Teflon, with the uh, chemical coated pans, you normally can't use um, metal or stainless steel because you might scratch the pan. Cast iron also evenly distributes heat and holds onto it. Uh, cast iron can also be easily restored if it's mistreated. Uh, cast iron also has health benefits. Um, it can help increase your intake of iron. So if you're anemic or iron deficient, cast iron is the cookware for you. The amount of iron you get out of your food depends on what you're cooking and how long you're cooking it for. Um, also another health benefit, where cast iron is nonstick, you don't have to use as much oil. Now cast iron is so versatile. You can put it on the top of your stove, you can stick it in a 500 degree oven, you can take it and put it right on top of your grill, you can also use it in a campfire. Now some of the things you can cook in cast iron, you can fry chicken, you can bake a blueberry pie, you could make cornbread, you could make bacon and eggs, you could also bake cookies. And cast iron is great too if you're um, doing a casserole. You could put the cast iron on your stove top and cook your chicken, your meat, whatever. Once it's cooked, then you can throw your noodles, your sauce, everything in, then take the cast iron pan and put it directly in your oven. And there you have a casserole. And the thing I love about that, it's just one pan you have to clean up. I love that. You can also sear a steak in a cast iron pan, then just take it right directly out to the grill. Um, so if you have a small kitchen and you don't have a lot of storage space, cast iron's great because it's so versatile, you don't need that many pieces of it. So you can really cut down on your pots and pans and your bakeware. Now you wanna make sure that you heat up your cast iron pan before you use it. Um, putting cold food into a cold cast iron pan isn't gonna produce the best results. So usually if you just put it on your um, stove top uh, on a low flame, uh, or low setting and just heat it up for like five to 10 minutes before you use it. Now, cast iron, when you're using it, you always wanna make sure you have pot holders on hand because the handle on cast iron pans is cast iron. So it's gonna heat up just uh, as hot as the pan will. So just make sure you've got pot holders or you can also use, this is a um, cast iron, um, handle cover. I believe it's made of silicone, so this comes in really handy too. Cleanup is a breeze. All you basically have to do is wash out the pan with a little water. I mean, sometimes because of the nonstick coating, you could just take a paper towel and wipe out the pan. But usually what I do is I use a little bit of water, um, a sponge, just wipe it down, and then take a paper towel or a towel and um, wipe it dry. Uh, some people, from what I read about cast iron, say yes, you can use a little dishwashing liquid, and others say no, you can't. 
but you know what you don't really need it because they clean up so easily and plus I think cast iron's a bit porous so to me I don't want my food to taste like Dawn dishwashing liquid so I just use a little bit of water and wipe it out clean now if you have stubborn food residue you can put a little common table salt in your cast iron pan and use that to scrub it a little bit um, but you want to make sure that when you're cleaning it it's totally dry you don't want to leave um, it wet because it will rust the pan. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just put the pan back on the stove on a low heat setting and while well, I'm cleaning up the rest of the kitchen and just let it dry like that for a few minutes to make sure all the moisture has evaporated. As I mentioned at the beginning, you have to season your cast iron pan. Now most new pans um, do come pre-seasoned. Um, the one I bought, it was pre-seasoned, but I just seasoned it again, just to even make the nonstick coating last longer. Um, in order to season a cast iron pan, you're going to take some oil, and you're gonna put it in your pan, and you're gonna take like a paper towel, and you're just gonna, I'd say probably use a couple of tablespoons of oil. You're gonna rub that oil in really good all over the pan. You want to do the handle too. Now, you just want a very thin, thin coating of oil. You don't want puddles of oil in there. Just a real thin coating is all that it takes. So you're gonna take the cast iron pan, you're gonna put it in the oven. Then you're gonna turn the oven on to 450 degrees. You're going to leave the pan in there for 30 minutes. Um, then you are going to shut the oven off and you're going to leave the pan in there till it's completely cooled. Now, how do you know when it's time to re-season your pan? Well, your food will start to stick to the pan. Um, the pan may get a little, start getting some rust on it, or um, it will lose its sheen. Once you've put that, um, you've seasoned it, it has this nice, shiny, non-stick coating. Now, the oils that you can use to season your pan, you can use canola oil, you can use vegetable oil, um, you can use sunflower oil, and also avocado oil. Um, avocado oil seems to work the best, but it is kind of pricey, but there again, you're not using that much of it. But any of those oils will work. You do want to stay away from olive oil. Olive oil does not do well at high temperatures, so don't use olive oil when you're seasoning your pan. So those are some of the benefits of cooking with cast iron. Um, so try getting a pan today. They, you know, um, cast iron is pretty inexpensive, comparatively speaking, because you figure when you buy it, you're gonna have it for life. Um, Lodge, L-O-D-G-E, they make a good cast iron pan, and those are available on Amazon. But you know what? Maybe you should just check up in your attic, because maybe your great-great-grandparents left one to you and it's up in your attic and you just completely forgot about it. Okay, let's move right on to our one ingredient facial. Okay, so our one ingredient for our facial is ketchup. Now you're probably laughing, but ketchup is packed with ingredients that are nourishing for your skin. It's got antioxidants, it's got vitamin C in it, it has lycopene, it has citric acid, which will gently exfoliate your skin. Now, a ketchup facial will kind of mimic a chemical peel. That's where you go into a doctor's, a dermatologist's office, and they put chemicals on your face, which get rid of the top layers of all those dead skin cells, revealing new, soft, supple skin. Now, a chemical peel on average costs $673, but with ketchup, you're only talking pennies. And it could even be free if you save those ketchup packages when you get takeout food. Okay, for this facial, you will need ketchup, you will need a washcloth or a, a facial sponge, and a good moisturizer. So, hello, Beulah. Beulah's here. We haven't seen you around in a long time. Beulah always comes and helps us when we're de demonstrating beauty treatments. But I'm sorry, dear, but you're going to have to take your mask off. Okay, so what you want to do is, don't worry, I won't breathe on you. You're going to take your ketchup. I'm just going to simulate this for you. 
your, first, you always, when you do a facial, want to start off with clean, dry skin. And if you're going to apply the ketchup with your hands, then you want to make sure you wash your hands. So you're going to apply some of the ketchup. And what you're going to do is you're going to put it all over your face, stay away from your eye area. And you just need a very thin layer of this. Then you're going to wait for five to 10 minutes. But if you have super sensitive skin, you might want to start off with shorter intervals. Uh, my, my skin's pretty sensitive and I usually leave it on for anywhere from five to seven minutes. Um, and it does tingle when it fr I first put it on, but the sensation goes away. Then after you've let it sit there for a while, uh, for five to 10 minutes, you want to remove it. Now, when you go to, you're gonna use nice cool water to rinse it off, and you wanna use this face cloth, but you don't wanna rub it aggressively like this, because you have to be very gentle with newly exfoliated skin. So you just have a really gentle touch when you're removing that ketchup. Then once you got it all off, just uh, splash your face with cold water. Then you're going to apply a good moisturizer. You know, ketchup has vinegar in it, which is good in a way because it's antibacterial, but it also can be a little drying to your skin. So you wanna make sure you've got a nice, good, rich moisturizer. You can do this facial once a week. Um, it may leave your skin a little pink because of the exfoliation, so you might want to do it maybe before you go to bed so your skin will recover while you're sleeping. And then you wake up in the morning, your skin's going to have a nice glow to it. It will be smooth as silk. Your makeup will go on like butter. But you don't have to. I, I still do a catch of facial sometimes during the day. But if I'm going out in the sun, I make sure I put sunscreen on to protect my newly exfoliated skin. Now. If putting ketchup on your face is just too bizarre for you, I do have another facial that will mimic the same results. Um, I don't have time to do it today. It does have cucumber in it, um, but we will talk about that on the next episode. That is all the time I have for today. Our quote of the day is, always forgive your enemies. Nothing annoys them so much. That was said by Oscar Wilde. Well, thanks everybody for spending some time with me today. I hope you had some fun. I hope you maybe learned a thing or two. And please don't forget to take the time to take care of you. I will see you soon. Bye for now. Hey everyone, did you know you could watch Mrs. Magoo on YouTube? Simply go to YouTube and type in Taking Care of You with Mrs. Magoo and watch an episode.